Okay, so what I want to do is I want to model this beetle. And I've just gone into Photoshop and I've lined this up and I've given it an alpha channel, so it's got a little alpha channel on it. Okay, great. <clears throat> um, and if I go into images and I just check my image size, I've got it th here. My width is 3,888 pixels by 2,592 pixels. Okay, and I've got this saved in my project source images folder. And what I want to do is bring it in here to Maya to use it. And how I like to set up my little image planes. <clears throat> and you can do this any way you want to, but this is my way. Um, if I go in and I can create, like uh, maybe I'll use the Create Polygon tool. If I go in and I hold down X, I can just kind of quickly zip in a flat polygon plane. Boop, perfect square. Okay. And if I go in and I right click and I go assign favorite materials, I go over and I put on a Lambert. Um, and I'll go into color and I'll hit the file texture here and I'm going to go image name and I'll go browsing and I've got a beetle. Uh, there we go. That's the one I want. That's my reference image. Okay, wait a second. It shows up. Sometimes you have to go and click on this sample to update it. Uh, I've gone in and I've taken... Uh, that sample thing, if you go into actually your window, settings, preferences, preferences, and in the preferences you go looking around for your settings, no, settings, display, display, maximum resolution for swatches, I put it to 12k by 12k, that way I never have to freaking refresh any of these silly images I bring in. Anyway, save, right, actually I didn't need to save anything, I didn't do anything different. <clears throat> okay, so next thing I'm going to do. I just want to scale this thing, and let's see, I'm scaling here along Z. So if I look, I can scale this, and I'm going to scale it to 3.888. Great. And then here along X, that's the one I want to scale on here, so I'm going to go in and I'll do a 2.592. Right, so I put decimal points in there, because if I, if I gave it 3,888 units, it would be obnoxious. I'm just going to scale this up. If you scale it in the middle now, it's scaling uniformly, and that's happy times. I'm just going to go ahead and make this a bit bigger so it's like grid size. I'm going to kill the history and freeze the transformations. Yay! And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my insert edge loop tool. Insert edge loop. Here. Boop. Insert an edge loop. And I cleverly laid this out in Photoshop so there's a fine line I could quickly fit in between. Yay! Okay, and I might just go ahead, grab these edges, and I'm going to go to Edit Mesh, Detach. That was Edit Mesh, Edge, Detach. Okay, so now they're split up. And now I just I want them to be separate objects. So I'm going to go into Mesh, and I'm going to hit uh, Separate, and then I'm going to delete the history right away. Actually, one other thing I didn't really think about here is that my X here is, or Z rather, Z is pointing this way. That's the front axis. I should probably take these and, uh, I just gotta take a look at this. I hit the wrong button. Boop. If I go into the hypergraph, la, 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 la. you will see that when I hit separate, it split it into three objects here and there's a group node on top. I'm just gonna grab the group node and I'm gonna hold down J. Do something like that. And uh, then I'm just going to take, say, this one by itself, and I'm going to hold down J, and I'll rotator it. Okay, great. And <clears throat> when I rotate it, I'm going to pull it up on top here. Actually, I think I might be... Yeah, I notice my renderers, I'm on legacy. Okay, so I just switched this. Actually, it's funny, it's updating and still flaking out. thought viewport 2 is on. Okay, whatever. Um, anyway... Uh, if I take this and I push it this way, okay, I'll be happy. I've moved it so it's up and standing on the grid, and it's about roughly grid size. That also makes me happy. I'll just take this one, and I'm going to bring this up a little bit. And maybe these, both these two right now, I'm just going to hit center pivot. Okay, fine. Now I'm just going to flip to the top view. And I'll hit if, there we go. And maybe I'll grab this one by itself, and I'll kind of line it up so it's in the middle of the grid. Something like that. Okay, great. I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to put it on top. And when I put it on top, I notice it doesn't quite fit. 
<laughs> so what I'm going to do in this case here, I'm just going to uh, make sure my transformations are froze before I do this. Just especially the scales. That's what I'm really looking for. If I just hold down J, flip, I can flip it inside out and invert it. And then I can line it up and yeah, I'm happy, happy, happy. Right. And I'm going to take this bottom one, I'm going to put it up top. I'm going to take the top one, I'm going to put it a bit lower. Okay. Good enough. Now, um, <clears throat> next thing I want to do, I'm just going to go into the Attribute Editor, and if I look for this thing called the Shape Node, actually here, I'm just going to quickly rename these. I'm going to grab these three objects, I'm going to make sure Rename is on, and I'm just going to go and call them Ref. And I call them Ref123. Great. And I'll take this one, and I'm going to go into the Shape Node section of the Attribute Editor, and if I go down here to Render Stats, and I look and I see Double Sided, I turn that off, now I can only see it from one side. Uh, I'm seeing it from the wrong side, so I'm going to go to Normals, and I'm going to hit Reverse. Yeah! Do the same thing here, Double Sided. And if I go to Normals, Reverse. Now it's on that side. Grab this one, Double Sided, that one should be good. Okay, good, 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 good! And I'm just going to grab the, uh, the Group node that is on, I'll just call this Ref underscore group. Great. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it onto a layer. I've already got a layer over here. I'll just quickly go in and add it in. Great. And there you can go in and open and close it. You can put it on reference so you can't select it. Okay, everything's locked in place. And now all i got to do is save it. And I'm ready to start modeling.